Hi, it's Dwyer. It is March the 9th, 2021. DwyerCrime.blog, also RichardDwyer.co. Let's talk about episode three of the Mia Farrow and Woody Allen HBO docuseries. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now first, let me say that the episode for me is a jaw dropper. Now, let me add, the evidence to me is so clear that this will likely be my last video on the series, which I was reluctant to watch. Right? Understand, to me it was unclear when I started watching this series, when I got talked into watching this series, as to whether or not I would ever reach an opinion on what happened. Well, I have reached an opinion. I believe the evidence is much clearer than the critics claim it is. Now, first, let's just talk about the witnesses. According to at least three people who were there, Again, three people who were there. Understand, this isn't a Woody Allen versus Mia Farrow type thing where they're in a vacuum and no one's around. No people are around, including the babysitter. According to three people who were there, Woody Allen and his very young seven-year-old daughter, Dylan, went missing for 20 minutes. Right, missing for 20 minutes on a family outing that did not involve Mia Farrow, right? Mia's not there. According to three people, including the babysitter, Dylan and Woody are missing for 20 minutes. One of the people walk into a room and see Woody's head on Dylan's lap. Again, Woody's head is on Dylan's lap. In an earlier episode in this series, we learned that when Mia Farrow later meets up with Dylan, she was not wearing panties. Mia Farrow then tapes her daughter Dylan, who is reluctant to talk about it but says that Alan touched her privates and motions to her behind and the area below her waist. Now Alan's defense is twofold. His first argument is that he had had an affair with Sun Yi, Mia's older daughter. Right? Mia and Alan were longtime boyfriend, girlfriend. Right? They weren't married as I claimed in an earlier video. They were boyfriend, girlfriend. Right? My earlier statement on marriage was in error. According to Alan, because he was having an affair with Mia's older daughter, who of course Alan claims was in college, Mia claims was in high school, Mia was a scorned woman. She was vindictive. So, of course, she was making things up, according to Alan, right? Coached her daughter into believing that she was a victim of child abuse. Woody's second argument is the one that interests me. He flatly claims that he and Dylan were not missing for 20 minutes on the day in question. That's his claim. It's up to all of us to judge the credibility of the people. Woody's explanation, simply put, does not work for me, as it ignores the recollections of three different people, including the babysitter, who were there that day and who went looking for Dylan. Right, young seven-year-old, suddenly she's missing. Multiple people go looking for her. They have a specific recollection. 
as I believe most of us would, of being someplace and a child is missing. Understand, Woody's claim that Mia is vindictive and a scorned woman, that's his opinion, that's his speculation. But what happened on the day in question, folks, there are people there. They know that Dylan was missing for 20 minutes. They know that. Right? No one's calling them vindictive. Now let me make an offer here. An invitation. To those of you who have left a message to my earlier videos for the first episode and the second episode where you've tried to defend Woody Allen. If you know of any other witness, other than the three witnesses who came forward and said Dylan was missing for 20 minutes. If you know of anybody else who was there that day who supports Woody's version of events, I hope you leave that information with links in the comments section of this YouTube video. And for those of you hearing this on iTunes or on Google Podcasts, my YouTube account is youtube.com slash Dwyer70905. Actually, it's not. It's youtube.com slash Esquire777. Again, youtube.com slash Esquire777. Well, let me just point out that the 20 minutes gets you to the heart of the case. There were witnesses who were present. They recall Dylan and Woody going missing. The court system was split. The Yale New Haven Hospital's Child Sexual Abuse Clinic found the seven-year-old Dylan to be an unreliable witness. Sadly, they destroyed their own notes. Sometimes medical outfits have protocols like this to protect the accused in situations where they don't believe the allegations are meritorious. Sometimes it's a risk management situation as well. Right? Destroy the notes. There's no evidence as to the nature and extent of the investigation. In New York, where Woody later filed for child custody, the notes weren't destroyed. Both the caseworker assigned to the case, Paul Williams, who had a very high reputation, had actually won an award for his case work, and the New York judge who presided over the custody trial, found Dylan to be credible. The judge found Allen's behavior to be, in the judge's words, grossly inappropriate close quotes to the child. Again, grossly inappropriate. Well, let me just say, my own personal opinion is I believe the New York City caseworker Paul Williams. I believe the findings of the New York court system in the custody trial, as well as the three witnesses who contend that Alan and young Dylan were missing for 20 minutes that day. I believe the witness who saw Alan's head in Dylan's lap that day. I also believe, importantly, 
Dylan. She's seven. Not two years old. Not three years old. She's seven. Let me also say, too, that they have an expert on the show who makes an excellent point. Right? Anna Salter, who is an expert on child abuse. She looked at the tape where Mia Farrow is questioning Dylan. And it's an important point. Understand, if Dylan's being led by Mia Farrow, then Dylan would adopt Mia Farrow's narrative. She would shade her answers toward things that would make Woody Allen look bad. But that's not what happened. Mia Farrow asked her daughter, did Woody Allen take off your panties? Words to that effect. And Dylan says no. Right? From what I could tell, looking at the tape, there's no script there. Dylan's answering the questions. Right? By the way, with regard to her panties, <clears throat> as I watched the episode, I got the feeling that the reason why Woody didn't take the panties off, according to Dylan, was because her panties were already off. I've only watched episode three once. I encourage people in the comment section of this video to give us their take on it. Right, but I don't believe the video shows Mia Farrow leading her daughter to some place that's accusatory toward the stepfather. Right? I believe this is different. I think Mia's asking questions like, where did he touch you? And her daughter shows her. I also don't think that a seven-year-old is sophisticated enough to come up with some lurid story where someone is touching her in the butt area. Now that's my own opinion. I recognize and understand that the Connecticut judicial system found otherwise. Right? Please don't interpret my opinion to be a factual statement. What I'm saying is that on one side of the aisle, there is Woody claiming that his wife, excuse me, his girlfriend, longtime girlfriend, with whom he had a child. That his girlfriend's vindictive, vindictive enough to try to manufacture child abuse claims against him. On the other side of the aisle are multiple witnesses who saw strange behavior and the girl's testimony caught on tape shortly after the event if an event happened, right? Let's just say, I believe the New York City caseworker, I believe the New York judge who presided over the custody trial, I believe Mia's daughter, Dylan. Frankly, the series is shocking to me, and I mean this. As I realize now that there was a lot of evidence, in my opinion, against Woody Allen. When I went into this series, I thought, okay, this is a situation where relationship breakup, there are going to be accusations. Um, as I've said here before, I'm a divorce attorney. I've been involved in cases where there are a lot of accusations where the kids have had to be interviewed by experts and stuff like that. I thought this was going to be a situation like that. It's not. Let me point out, too, that people had concerns about Woody's relationship with his daughter, Dylan, contemporaneously, before 
this missing 20 minutes. Now I'm surprised that there's even a dispute over whether Dylan went missing for 20 minutes when there were so many people present. So again, if you know of anyone who was present that day who supports Alan's version of events, please leave that information in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.